Imagine a world where one country holds a secret so powerful that it can control the future of aviation for decades. Back in 1871, Britain did just that. They built the world's first wind tunnel laboratory, starting a 60-year monopoly on a technology that would define the skies. For decades, the rest of the world could only watch as Britain soared ahead, setting the pace in aviation research. Fast forward to 30 years ago, when China was just beginning to explore this field. Experts in the United States openly said it would take China 50 years just to catch up. Skepticism was everywhere. Many believed that China simply didn't have the resources, experience, or know-how to challenge the established powers. But here's where the story takes a twist. Instead of giving up, Chinese scientists took this doubt as fuel. They turned ridicule into determination and setbacks into motivation. Today, the world is staring in disbelief, not because China followed the path, but because it has surpassed expectations in a way nobody predicted. At first glance, a wind tunnel might sound like a strange niche piece of equipment, just some big tube with air blowing through it. But in reality, wind tunnels are at the heart of modern aviation, aerospace, and even national defense. Think of them like a giant simulator for the sky. Before an airplane ever takes off, Engineers need to know how it will behave in real flight conditions. You can't just guess. You need precise data. Here's a simple way to picture it. Imagine testing a storm in a laboratory. You create a small controlled version of a hurricane to see how objects behave. That's essentially what a wind tunnel does for aircraft. Engineers build a scaled down model of the plane, place it inside the tunnel, and then blast high speed air at it. This allows them to study airflow, pressure and turbulence as if the plane were flying thousands of meters above the ground. But the importance of wind tunnels goes far beyond airplanes. They are crucial for hypersonic research, the kind of technology that powers missiles, spacecraft, and next-generation supersonic jets. Countries that master this technology gain a strategic advantage. They can design safer aircraft, launch satellites more efficiently, and develop weapons that can travel faster than anything before. In short, Wind tunnels aren't just labs, they are the launch pads for innovation that can shape the future of flight, defense, and space exploration. And this is exactly the field where China has made its most remarkable strides in recent decades. To understand China's journey, we need to look at the bigger picture, how wind tunnel technology developed around the world. After Britain built the first wind tunnel in 1871, countries like the United States, Germany, and the Soviet Union quickly recognized its importance. By the mid-20th century, these nations were racing ahead, building larger, faster, and more precise tunnels to study everything from fighter jets to space vehicles. China, however, had a much slower start. Its first wind tunnel was built in 1936, but history was unkind. Just a few years later, during the outbreak of the anti-Japanese war, this new facility was destroyed. This was more than just a setback. It erased years of progress and pushed China decades behind the Western powers. By the 1950s, while the US, Germany, and the USSR were refining hypersonic technologies, China was essentially starting from scratch. This historical lag created a nearly 50-year gap between China and the leading countries in wind tunnel technology. But this context also sets the stage for a compelling story. An underdog with limited resources, emerging from war and isolation, determined to catch up and eventually to leap ahead. After the devastation of war, China faced enormous challenges in rebuilding its scientific and technological capabilities. The country had few resources, limited equipment, and almost no access to the advanced knowledge that Western countries were developing. Early attempts to revive wind tunnel research in the late 1940s and early 1950s made little progress. For over a decade, Chinese scientists worked tirelessly, often under extremely difficult conditions, but breakthroughs remained elusive. Yet despite these setbacks, the scientists did not give up. They persisted in laboratories that were far simpler than those abroad, conducting experiments with the little equipment they had and learning from each failure. Every test, Every misstep was a lesson that slowly built the foundation for future success. Their determination wasn't just about catching up, it was about proving that, with enough perseverance, China could innovate and lead. This period of struggle is crucial to understanding the story. It shows that technological leaps don't happen overnight. They are built on years of patient, disciplined effort. And this resilience would soon set the stage for a pivotal moment that would change the course of Chinese aerospace research. 
The turning point in China's wind tunnel journey came with the return of Qian Shuisen, one of the most brilliant scientists of the 20th century. Qian was internationally renowned for his work in aerodynamics and rocket science in the United States, but he made the life-changing decision to return to China in the 1950s. His arrival wasn't just symbolic, it was the spark that reignited China's aerospace ambitions. Qian took on a leadership role as the director of the Institute of Mechanics at the Chinese Academy of Sciences. Under his guidance, Chinese scientists began to rebuild wind tunnel research from the ground up. One of the first breakthroughs during this period was the creation of the hydrogen-oxygen combustion-driven shock tube. While it was a complex and risky technology, it marked China's first major step toward mastering high-speed airflow experiments. Qian's vision and leadership transformed scattered efforts into a coordinated national mission. He showed that with the right guidance, determination, and ingenuity, China could overcome decades of technological isolation and start closing the gap with the world's leading countries. His influence set the stage for a series of innovations that would eventually propel China into the global forefront of wind tunnel technology. Even with Qian Shesen's leadership, Chinese scientists faced another major obstacle international isolation. Western countries, led by the United States, imposed strict technological blockades, cutting off China from key research, equipment, and knowledge. This meant that every advancement had to be made with minimal resources, relying almost entirely on domestic innovation. Chinese researchers responded with relentless trial and error. Countless experiments were conducted, many ending in failure. Each setback, however, became a stepping stone. They meticulously analyzed what went wrong, refined their designs, and tried again. It was a process that demanded patience, creativity, and courage because a single mistake in high-speed wind tunnel experiments could be catastrophic. Despite the challenges, these early efforts produced China's first-generation shock tubes. They weren't perfect, but they laid the essential groundwork for all future breakthroughs. This period illustrates a critical lesson. Technological isolation, while daunting, can drive ingenuity. By forcing scientists to innovate under constraints, China built a foundation that would eventually allow it to surpass the countries that once doubted it. With the first-generation shock tubes in place, Chinese scientists entered a new phase, turning early achievements into a robust foundation for advanced research. During the 1960s, they developed the JF-4 straight-through shock wind tunnel, the JF-4A reflection shock wind tunnel, and the JF-8 shock wind tunnel. Each of these projects represented a technological leap moving China from having almost no capability to building a structured infrastructure for hypersonic research. The 1990s marked another breakthrough with the creation of the hydrogen-oxygen detonation-driven high enthalpy shock tunnel. This was the world's first successfully operated detonation-driven shock tunnel, a milestone that placed China firmly on the global map in hypersonic wind tunnel technology. It wasn't just an experiment, it was a demonstration that decades of persistence, trial and error, and incremental progress could lead to innovations that rivaled or even surpassed Western technologies. This period of steady, stepwise development was critical. China wasn't trying to leap ahead recklessly. It was building expertise layer by layer. By the turn of the century, the country had moved from zero to a position where it could innovate at the cutting edge, setting the stage for hypersonic ambitions in the 21st century. As the new millennium began, the world's aerospace community became obsessed with hypersonic flight. Aircraft and engines capable of traveling faster than five times the speed of sound. Hypersonic technology promised breakthroughs in military applications, space travel, and even commercial aviation. China recognized that mastering this hypersuper technology wasn't just a matter of prestige. It was essential for national security and global competitiveness. In 2006, Chinese scientists proposed a bold new project, the JF-12 shock tunnel, designed to accurately simulate hypersonic flight conditions. By 2008, the project was officially launched under the State Key Laboratory of High Temperature Gas Dynamics. Building on decades of research, including detonation-driven wind tunnels, the JF-12 aimed to solve a 60-year-old problem, how to test hypersonic conditions on the ground with precision and reliability. After four years of relentless effort, the JF-12 was completed and accepted in 2012. At the time, it was the world's largest hypersonic shockwave wind tunnel and the first to accurately reproduce real hypersonic flight conditions. 
This achievement marked a turning point. China had moved from being a follower in wind tunnel technology to becoming a global leader capable of addressing the most advanced challenges in aerospace research. China didn't stop with the JF-12. In 2018, the country announced an even more ambitious project, the JF-22 hypersonic wind tunnel. The goal was nothing short of revolutionary, to simulate flight conditions at speeds and altitudes that had never been tested before. Many experts in the United States were skeptical, questioning whether China could move so quickly after completing the JF-12. But the Chinese team pressed on, combining decades of accumulated knowledge, advanced engineering, and innovative problem solving. After five years of intense research and construction, the JF-22 was officially completed and passed acceptance tests in July 2023. This wasn't just a laboratory success, it was a global statement. With the JF-22, China had achieved a level of hypersonic wind tunnel capability that surprised the world, surpassing the most advanced American facilities in both speed and operational duration. It was proof that decades of persistence, independent innovation, and strategic vision could not only close the technological gap, but also push China into a leadership position in aerospace research. The JF-22 hypersonic wind tunnel is nothing short of a technological masterpiece. It can simulate airflows at speeds of up to Mach 33, that's 33 times the speed of sound, and operate at altitudes ranging from 20,000 to 100,000 meters, which is almost the edge of space. But you know, speed alone isn't what makes it extraordinary. The tunnel can maintain these conditions for 100 to 130 milliseconds, far longer than the U.S. Lenzec tunnel, which maxes out at Mach 30 for only 30 milliseconds. To put this in perspective, Mach 33 is like traveling 10 kilometers every second. At these speeds, testing real aircraft or weapons in flight would be almost impossible without such a facility. The JF-22 allows engineers to simulate extreme conditions safely on the ground, dramatically accelerating research and development. The implications are enormous. For aerospace, it means more efficient satellite launches, potential cost reductions of up to 90%. For defense, it enables testing of hypersonic weapons that could travel faster than anything currently deployed by other nations. In short, the JF-22 doesn't just push boundaries, it redefines them, giving China a technological edge that could shape the future of flight, space exploration, and strategic military capabilities. The JF-22 isn't just a scientific achievement, it's honestly a game-changer with massive strategic and economic implications. On the economic side, the tunnel can dramatically reduce the cost of testing and launching satellites or spacecraft. By simulating hypersonic conditions on the ground, engineers can identify design flaws before costly real-world trials, potentially cutting launch expenses by up to 90%. This could make space access way more affordable and really accelerate China's space programs. Strategically, the JF-22 gives China an edge in hypersonic weapon development. At Mach 33, these weapons can travel roughly 10 kilometers per second, meaning they could strike distant targets in minutes, well beyond the reaction time of current defense systems. This capability changes the balance of military power, forcing other nations to rethink both defense strategies and technological priorities. Beyond weapons, the technology also supports supersonic aircraft, high-speed aviation research, and even next-generation rockets. Essentially, Mastering hypersonic wind tunnels isn't just about building better planes or missiles, it's about controlling the frontier of flight itself. With JF-22, China isn't just keeping pace with the world, it's setting the pace, creating both economic and strategic advantages that could last for decades. The story of the JF-22 is just the beginning. Chinese scientists are already planning the next wave of innovations, building on the capabilities of this hypersonic wind tunnel. One major project is the development of a stationary oblique detonation engine, a futuristic propulsion system that could increase heating efficiency by 50% compared to traditional engines. This technology has the potential to power supersonic aircraft, aviation rockets, and even spacecraft, opening doors to previously unimaginable speeds and capabilities. Beyond engines, the JF-22 will continue to serve as a crucial testing ground for future aerospace breakthroughs. By simulating extreme altitudes and hypersonic speeds, engineers can explore technologies that move humans and satellites faster, cheaper, and more safely. 
Each experiment conducted in this tunnel strengthens China's position as a global leader in aerospace science. The bigger picture is clear. China's investment in hypersonic wind tunnel technology isn't about one achievement. It's about building a pipeline of next-generation innovations. Every breakthrough made today will shape the technologies of tomorrow, ensuring that China continues to push the boundaries of what is possible in aviation and space exploration. China's journey in wind tunnel technology is a story of resilience, vision, and relentless innovation. From the destruction of its first wind tunnel in 1936 to decades of post-war struggle, to breakthroughs led by visionary scientists like Qian Shuixin, China has transformed from an underdog into a global leader. The JF-22 hypersonic wind tunnel isn't just a facility. It's a symbol of what perseverance and independent innovation can achieve. This achievement shows that with determination and strategic focus, a country can overcome decades of setbacks and leap ahead of long-established powers. Beyond national pride, the implications touch space exploration, defense, and the global aerospace industry, potentially reshaping the balance of technological power for years to come. What do you think about China's rise in wind tunnel technology? Could this shift the global aerospace and defense landscape? Let us know in the comments. And if you want to stay updated on more breakthroughs, make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. We'll continue exploring the technologies that are shaping the future of flight, space, and global innovation.